friends, it's Sunday afternoon, April 5th, and I thought I'd read another chapter of our story. Chapter 2, The Red Fort. Kathleen and Teddy were gone. The air was hot. Flies buzzed around Jack's head. These are ambassador clothes, said Annie. Jack and Annie were dressed alike. They both wore wide brim felt hats, stockings, buckled shoes, short jackets, and short puffy pants. Jack's backpack had turned into a leather bag. I guess, said Jack. This must be how we've dressed almost 400 years ago in Frog Creek. If we both been bad boys, said Annie. So where are we? Jack and Annie looked out the window. The treehouse had landed in a row of tall, dark trees. The trees stood next to a red fort with a moat, a drawbridge, and a massive red battlements. Cool fort, said Jack. Yeah, and look, elephants, said Annie. I love elephants. Leading away from the fort were two streets. One was filled with oxen pulling cars, carts and people riding horses and elephants. Veiled women sat in carriages on the elephants' backs. Yeah, and there's a bazaar, like the one we saw in Baghdad, said Jack. He pointed to the other street, which was lined with tents and stalls. So... Where do you think we could find an emerald stone in the shape of a row, said Annie. Jack picked up their research book and opened to the first page. He read aloud. In the 1600s, India was a vast land of crowded cities and countless villages. A great deal of India, though, was still covered by wilderness. Wild creatures such as cheetahs, elephants, and Bengal tigers lived in its forests. India's wilderness was also home for many snakes, including the king cobra, one of the deadliest snakes on earth. Yikes, said Annie. She and Jack looked at the picture of, the, of a Bengal tiger and a king cobra. The growling tiger had a huge head and an enormous teeth. The cobra had speckled yellow bands around its long body. Its open jaws revealed two deadly fangs. Don't worry, said Jack with a shiver. We definitely didn't land in the wilderness. He turned the page until he found a drawing of the red fort. Yes, here's exactly where we landed, he read. For several centuries, mighty rulers known as Great Moguls ruled over much of India. The wealthiest of Great Moguls was named Shah Jahan. He lived inside the Red Fort, where he was protected night and day by imperial guards. So the Great Mogul lives here, right? Said Annie, how lucky is that? She and Jack looked at the fort again. I guess those guys must be imperial guards, Jack said. He pointed to the men in white coats and leggings guarding the drawbridge. Some carried spears, others had bow and arrows, right? But who do you think those guys are? Annie asked, pointing. Two carts pulled by, pulled by pairs of white oxen had stopped at the entrance to the bridge. Eight men were climbing out of the carts. They wore outfits like Jack and Annie's puffy pants, short jackets, and wide hats. Two of the guards greeted them with deep bows. They're dressed like us, said Jack, so I guess that they must be ambassadors, too. If they're visiting the Great Mogul, we should join them, said Annie. Hold on, said Jack. He opened his bag as he put their books inside. He noticed that everything that had been in their backpack was still there. His story from school, the note about the emerald rose, and the blue bottle with the potion to make them small. Okay, we've got everything, he said. Come on, before we miss our chance, Annie called, starting down the rope ladder. Wait, said Jack. He put, the ba put his bag over his shoulder and hurried after Annie. By the time he stepped off the, la the ladder, Annie was already heading toward the drawbridge of the fort. Annie, hold on. We have to talk about something important, said Jack. He didn't want her to say anything crazy to the guards or ambassadors. What, said Annie, waiting for him. If they're real ambassadors, we shouldn't get too close, Jack said. They'll figure out we're fakes. Oh, good point, said Annie. So let's wait until they start across the bridge, said Jack. Then we'll run to the gate and tell the guards that we're supposed to be with them. And don't forget, if anyone asks, you're my brother. Oh, you should stick your braids under your hat. Right, said Annie. She tucked her pigtails under her hat. How's that? Fine, I guess, said Jack. He was still worried about the fact that he and Annie looked too young. We have to try to act like ambassadors, so stand up straight and speak in a low voice. Okay, don't worry, said Annie. And we should... Hold up our chin, said Jack. Try to look taller. Okay, okay. Oh, look, they're leaving, said Annie. Let's go. The ambassadors had climbed back into their ox carts. 
As the carts started across the moat, Jack and Annie walked quietly toward the bridge. The first guard held up his sphere. Who are you? he asked. He had a long purple scar on his cheek and a silver rings and silver rings in his ears. We are ambassadors, Jack said in a deep voice. We are the gentlemen who just crossed the bridge. We are with the gentlemen who just crossed the bridge. The guard gave Jack and Annie a sharp look. You are with the ambassadors from Europe? He said, yes. Jack stood straighter, but we're from Frog Creek. I imagine you are thinking that we look very young, Annie said in a low voice. Well, it's true, we are young, but we are very learned. <clears throat> I see, said the guard. And imaginative and creative, Annie added. Oh, brother, thought Jack. I see, said the guard again. He looked at Jack's bag. And is this what you care? Is this? Is that what you carry your treasure, your gifts for great mogul? Um, well, said Jack, what gifts do ambassadors from Europe usually give great moguls? Annie asked. The gifts sent by the king and the queen of Europe are usually rare and beautiful, said the guard. Such as, said Annie, silver swords, golden go goblets, treasure chests filled with jewels and coins, said the, the guard, or perhaps the fastest horses from Arabia. Forget it, thought Jack. But... Annie smiled. I see, she said. Well, I am pleased to tell you that we have brought a gift far greater than any of those. <laughs>